You're welcome to Open Heaven's Devotional Commentary, a guide to a close fellowship with God. I'm Salam Manager Haruna, your host. We are glad to have you. Hello, good day, and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heaven's is written by our Father and the Lord, Pastor E. A. Adeboe, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, and this commentary intends to bring insights to God's Word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Thursday, the 11th day of April 2024, and our topic for today is The Challenges of Being Anointed, Part 2. Let us pray. Our faithful and loving Father, the one who anoints us with His power by His Spirit. Father, we thank You for Your goodness, Your mercy, Your love, Your kindness. Thank You for being dependable. Thank You for being the Father that we can trust. Thank You for always coming through for us. Today we come before you again ready to receive of your word. We open up our hearts, Lord, and we ask that you would come and teach us. Help us to undo everything that is not of you in our hearts and to receive that which you teach us today. Thank you, our dear Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our topic for today once more is the challenges of being anointed, part 2. And in our memory verse for today, we read from the book of Luke chapter 12 verse 48. Luke chapter 12 verse 48 reads, But he that knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. Luke chapter 12 verse 48 Our text for today is from the book of Mark chapter 6. We'll be reading from verse 31 to verse 34. Mark chapter 6 from verse 31 to 34 reads, And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by sheep privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran a foot theater out of all cities, and outwent them, and came together unto them. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and was moved with compassion toward them, because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Mark chapter 6, from verse 31 to verse 34. God bless the reading of his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Once again, our topic for today is the challenges of being anointed, part 2. And in the body of today's devotional, our Father and the Lord says to us that in continuation of my discussion from yesterday, one of the challenges of being anointed is that anointed people are perceived to be stronger than they really are. Because they pray and God answers immediately, people think that they don't need prayers themselves. Also, because they lay hands on the sick and the sick get healed, people think that they are superhuman and can never be weak or tired. Because they preach and souls get saved, there is a tendency to think that they never get tempted, whereas they probably face temptations more than other people. Moses made just one mistake in 40 years of leading the Israelites, but God said he would not get to the promised land. He had been interceding for Israel whenever they did terrible things, and God had been forgiving them. Now, in his own case, there was nobody to plead for him. Do you want to be heavily anointed? Be ready to walk endlessly. When I discovered that the Bible says that we should earnestly covet spiritual gifts, I was happy. I asked for double the anointing on Elisha, Peter, Paul and Jesus Christ when he was on the earth, and then asked that all should be combined and doubled again. God warned me then that I was asking for a dangerous thing, because people would not let me rest. When people see that you are anointed, they will bring all their problems to you. Even after you minister to them from the altar, they will still want to see you personally. You cannot send them away because the purpose of the anointing is to serve. 
when I employed a personal assistant and he asked, what are your work hours? I said, we start the day at 5 a.m. and only God knows when we will close. This is why raising other people who will also become anointed is necessary. RCCG is in over 190 nations of the world. How will I cope if every member comes to me with their problems? This is why each local assembly has anointed pastors that can pray for the members. Only the cases they can't handle come to me. God has also made things easier by making it possible for me to pray from the altar and anoint handkerchiefs which are used to perform the miracles that people would have called the general overseer to pray about in the past. A lot of responsibilities and challenges come with being anointed. So if you desire to be anointed, you should be ready to embrace them. God bless his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Our topic for today once more is the challenges of being anointed. Recently, we have been studying topics relating to the anointing and these have been blessing us greatly. We started with the topic, what is the anointing? Then we moved over to the topic, what does the anointing do? Then we studied the topic, the anointing can be dangerous, before moving to the topic, the anointed versus the anointed. After that, we studied the topic, judging the anointed. From that study, we moved on to the topic, benefits of the anointing. And yesterday, we studied the topic, the challenges of being anointed, part 1. Yesterday's study reveals to us that the anointing does not come without challenges which we must be willing to face and prices which we must be willing to pay if we want to be anointed of God. In that study, we saw the example of Moses who was anointed but was provoked by the children of Israel to act in a way that displeased God. This eventually made him not to enter into the promised land. We learned from our study yesterday to always acknowledge God and to know that without Him, we are nothing. In today's study, our Father in the Lord reveals to us that oftentimes the anointed is perceived or assumed to be stronger than they really are, or assumed to be having some kind of superpowers that immune them from certain human limitations. We learn from today's study that anointed men of God may need prayers themselves too. They fall sick sometimes and are weak and tired too. They get tempted just like any other person that you know. In my opinion, thinking that anointed men of God have some of these superhuman powers will not allow us to see the need of upholding them in prayers. It also heightens our expectations from them as though with them all things are possible and sometimes we may even get tempted to unconsciously give them the regard that is due to God and God alone. I would like us to read from Acts chapter 14 from verse 11 to 15. Acts chapter 14 from verse 11 to 15 reads, And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lycnea, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands onto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. In the scripture we just read, we see how Paul and Barnabas were acknowledged as gods amongst the Gentiles because of the anointing and how they refuted it immediately. It is important to note also that sometimes, because of the superhuman view that the anointed men of God are perceived with, it becomes difficult and sometimes even unbelievable when they share their challenges. Today, 
I would like us to intentionally take out time to acknowledge that anointed men of God also have their challenges. So we will be upholding them and strengthening them in the place of prayer. I would like us at this point to bow our heads today and say, Father, please strengthen every anointed son and daughter of yours who may be losing strength, whether physically, spiritually, emotionally, ministry-wise, or in any other aspect of their lives in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord today, say, Father, please strengthen them. Be their strength, be their encouragement. Lord, be that rock upon which they stand in any area of their lives where they may be facing challenges that has punctured their strength. Lord, please be their strength and their reinforcement in the name of Jesus. Also ask the Lord today, say, Father, please heal every anointed son or daughter of yours who may be dealing with any form of illness or infirmity of the body. Ask the Lord today, say, Father, please heal even those health conditions that they find difficult to share with others in the name of Jesus. Some may be going through very terrible situations that may be difficult to share. Ask the Lord today, say, Father, you who is the doctor of doctors, you who is the healer, please heal them today in the name of Jesus. Touch them, doctor of doctors. Touch them, balm of Gilead. Let every illness, every sickness today disappear in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord today also, say, Father, please provide a way out of every temptation that your anointed sons or daughters may be facing today. Say, Lord, please grant them the grace to be victorious over them always to your glory in the name of Jesus. Our Father, we are asking today that you come and strengthen your sons and your daughters. Help them, O Lord, to overcome every temptation they may be facing. Let them always come out bigger, stronger, and better in the name of Jesus. Let their victories over those temptations be permanent. In Jesus' name, Amen. Pray also say, Lord, please do for your anointed sons and daughters those things that their hearts desire, those things that they need that are known to you alone. Say, Father, please grant unto them pleasant surprises to your glory in Jesus' name. Our dear Father, we are asking today that you who knows the hearts of men, you'd come and provide for them those things that their hearts are yearning for, those things that they so much desire, those needs that you alone know and you alone understand. We ask that you would come through for them today. Thank you, our dear Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. King of glory, we thank you today for your blessed word which you have brought to us. Thank you for strengthening and for granting victory to your anointed today to overcome every challenge that they face. We declare in the name of Jesus that they continue marching from victory to victory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have a key point in today's study that tells us the anointing comes with challenges and responsibilities. We receive the grace today to always overcome the challenges and the responsibilities that come with the anointing in Jesus' name. We have in our Bible in one year reading plan for today to read from the book of 1 Kings chapter 8 down to chapter 9. We are also thanking you and appreciating you for joining us today. God bless you. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this sent to you daily, please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234-80-986-11226. Do well also to like, share, comment and subscribe to our various platforms available. Our hymn for today is the hymn 23 of our Open Heavens devotional. We will be singing, Take my life and let it be. Have a beautiful and blessed day ahead. See you tomorrow again by God's grace. We love you and bye for now.
This devotional blessed you. We are always glad to hear from you. So leave us a comment. Let us know how this has blessed you. Also remember to follow us on all our social media handles to get more like this. You can share this with someone to bless them too. We gladly look forward to seeing you tomorrow again. Have a fulfilling day ahead. God bless you.